Israel is ruining its economy on purpose, and Israel's war against Hamas has been going on, and the economy has taken a big hit. The war is costing the Israeli economy 600 million a week, but Israel doesn't care just because of this single person. This war is having an impact on your wallet, and you don't even have an idea about it. And who is that single person that is benefiting from the whole conflict? You will be shocked to find out the war between Hamas and Israel has intensified. Significantly earlier, we used to receive daily news updates about bombings and incidents in Gaza. But you may have noticed that now there is hardly any discussion about it. The reason is isolation. Yes, now that the internet and electricity have been cut off in Gaza, almost the entire region has been isolated by Israeli soldiers. In fact, Israel wants to gain control over the entire Gaza Strip without any objection. According to a CNN article, Israeli soldiers are killing ordinary civilians through sniper fire in southern Gaza. A surgeon at the Nasser Medical Complex described, witnessing a 16-year-old boy being shot four times in front of his own eyes with this sniping happening at the hospital gate and in many other places as well in Gaza. Fifteen people are being killed every hour, including six children, and 35 people are being injured every hour. Moreover, 42 bombs are being dropped every hour, meaning more than a thousand bombs BS are dropped every day. And these bombs are completely destroying 12 buildings every hour. If I were to put it simply, Israel is openly committing human genocide in Gaza without considering the consequences. It might bring in the future, and these consequences could be so costly that Israel may not even recover from it. Moreover, Israel is already falling behind, and its economy is declining. Let's understand what Israel's economic situation was like before. The Israel and Hamas war among the many differences between Israel's current war against Hamas and Gaza and the other wars it has fought in the past few decades. One aspect has gone under or examined its economic impact. Israel's previous wars have had limited economic fallout in part due to their brevity. By contrast, the current conflict against Hamas promises to be a more protracted campaign that will affect a more significant Israeli population and disrupt supply chains to a much greater degree. Fortunately, the Israeli economy entered the war in relatively good shape in terms of its resilience and strength. The economy has recorded high, albeit declining annual rates of growth, averaging 3.9% since 2000. The International Monetary Fund forecast growth for 2023 at 3.1%, increasing to 3.6%. By 2026, this sustained expansion gave Israel one of the highest per capita incomes in the Middle East, placing it roughly on par with Spain and Italy. In addition, Israel's financial metrics were strong prior to the war with a budget and current account surplus and a falling debt-to-GDP ratio. In 2022, before the start of the war, the Bank of Israel had EU zero billion of foreign exchange reserves, or the equivalent of a year's worth of imports. In September 2023, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu predicted a new era of peace and prosperity in the Middle East based on Israel's growing acceptance within the region. But today, everything has changed. People thought the conflict between Israel and Hamas would be short-lived like previous ones. However, the prolonged and intense nature of the current military operations has had severe economic consequences. For Israel, businesses have suffered, commerce has slowed down, flights to the country have been canceled, and tourism has halted. The ongoing uncertainty about the duration and outcome of the war war coupled with the significant. Daily cost of the war on Gaza to Israel, $246 million, has led to both economic and political uncertainty. The war between Israel and Hamas has had a significant impact on the Israeli economy as well as the global economy. According to some estimates, the economic toll of this violence may cost Israel an estimated $400 billion in loss. Economic activity over the next decade for Israel, 90% of the economic shock will come from indirect effects, reduced investment, slowing productivity, growth and labor market disruption. Let me explain. See barriers to the entry of more than 164,000 Palestinian employees in Israel, and Israeli settlements are likely to reduce productivity in the agriculture and real estate construction sectors, among others. For instance, the Israeli agriculture sector is lacking at least 15,000 Palestinian and foreign laborers since Palestinian workers have been banned or expelled. Alongside this, there have been mass departures from Israel of the 16.2% 
of the labor force made up of immigrants and foreign workers. When there won't be any workers, imagine how much daily life can be disrupted. Also, the war is costing the Israeli economy $600 million a week due to work absences. According to the Bank of Israel, this is equivalent to about 6% of the weekly GDP. The bank also stated that the estimate does not reflect total damage and did not include damages caused by the absence of Palestinian and foreign workers. On the other hand, Israel's Treasury Minister said the daily direct cost of the Gaza war to her country is about $246 million. It has been estimated that if the war went on for 8 to 12 months, the cost of the war to the Israeli economy would be more than $50 billion or close to 10% of GDP. According to calculists citing early Ministry of Finance figures, the economic toll of this violence may cost Israel an estimated $400 billion in lost economic activity over the next decade and threatened Israel's economic future due to Israel suspending Palestinian work permits. It recruited workers from India and Sri Lanka to fill the gaps. Also Israeli claims of Chinese sanctions Israel's high-tech factories reported. On the 25th of December, they had been having trouble with electronic imports from China due to recent bureaucratic obstacles, leading to higher import costs and delayed delivery times. Israeli officials also reported that China had refused to send workers to their country during the war against the backdrop of a worker shortage in Israel's construction and farming sectors. Now, as the discussion revolves around the impact on the economy, what impact did it have on the world economy? Mainly understanding it through three points. Rise in oil prices. The Middle East region accounts for nearly a third of the global oil supply, and any instability there can create uncertainty and fear of supply disruptions. This can increase the risk premium in oil markets, which is the difference between the futures price and the spot price of oil. The risk premium reflects the expectations and hedging needs of oil producers and consumers, as well as the profits of speculators. The higher the risk premium, the higher the oil price. The war has already pushed the crude oil price to about $90 per barrel, which is a 4% increase from the previous month. This affects the global economy, especially countries that depend on oil imports, such as India, China, Japan, and most of Europe. Second is trade disruption. The war can also affect the trade flows and relations between countries in the region. And beyond Israel is a major trading partner for many countries, especially the US and India. The US is Israel's largest export market accounting for 28% of its total exports in 2022. The war can also worsen the existing trade tensions between the US and China as well as the EU and Iran over issues such as sanctions, tariffs, and human rights. These trade conflicts can hammer the global economic recovery and cooperation. Another possible implication of the Israel-Palestine war is the shift in alliances among the countries involved or affected by the conflict. For example, the war can affect the U.S.'s role and interest in the Middle East, as well as its relations with its allies and adversaries. The U.S. has been a staunch supporter of Israel, providing it with military, economic, and political assistance. However, the U.S. also has other strategic interests in the region, such as maintaining stability, countering terrorism, and securing oil supplies. The U.S. may face a dilemma between backing Israel and engaging with other regional players such as Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, Turkey, and Iran. The U.S. may also face criticism and pressure from the international community, especially the U.N. and the E.U., for its stance on the conflict and its failure to broker a peace deal. The Israel-Palestine war can also affect the alliances and rivalries among the countries in the Middle East itself, such as Iran, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq. These countries have different political, religious, and ethnic affiliations and agendas, and have been involved in various conflicts and proxy wars in the region. The war can exacerbate the existing divisions and hostilities, or create new opportunities for dialogue and cooperation. The war can also affect the role and interests of Russia, which has been a major military and political ally of Iran and Syria and arrival of the U.S. and Israel, Russia may seek to intervene or influence the outcome of the war to protect its interests and assert its power in the region. The Israel-Palestine war can have a significant impact on the global geopolitical landscape, as it can change the alliances and rivalries among the countries involved or affected by the conflict. You might be thinking it could be a Muslim country or perhaps one of Israel. 
his adversaries. But guess what? Only Benjamin Netanyahu is benefiting from this war. Surprised, right? Yes, I was shocked too when I found out. Let me explain. Look, ever since Israel retaliated against Gaza, the method of retaliation involved cutting off electricity and water supply to the general population of Gaza. Even hospitals were bombed. This hasn't gone down well with Israeli citizens because in the end, they are also humans and the world is watching what's happening. As I mentioned earlier, according to reports, around 28,000 people have been killed so far and how many more are missing. Interestingly, not only in the world but also in Israel, there is anti-Netanyahu. Sen Netanyahu must resign, Netanyahu must go movement is going on. In the oldest newspaper of Israel, Netanyahu is being criticized and being asked to leave not only intellectuals. You can also see the opinion poll results, 56% of the respondents say that Netanyahu should leave after the war. Netanyahu was not popular even before the war started for years. The supreme leader of Israel used many tricks to keep himself in power and will be remembered as the worst prime minister of Israel. Leaving internationally, he is seen as a failed strongman domestically. Now even though Israel is receiving both international support and condemnation. Within Israel, the domestic support for Netanyahu seems to be wavering. Why is that? Why is Netanyahu facing this problem despite being such a popular leader? The problem is that when you give a popular leader a carte blanche instead of saying do whatever you want, they tend to abuse it earlier this year in July at any whose government passed a law that further weakened the judiciary. Now, no matter how constitutional or unconstitutional any controversial law passed by parliament, the judiciary cannot interfere with it. It cannot raise objections, cancel it, or take any action against it. This is a step towards completely bringing the judiciary under legislative control. Moreover, Netanyahu has numerous corruption allegations against him. He has inappropriate alliances with billionaires, and there are accusations that media groups were paid for favorable coverage. Due to these corruption charges, Netanyahu was also summoned to court, and a trial is ongoing against him. Even after becoming prime minister when talking about press freedom, there is also some corruption involved. Netanyahu has launched a systemic attack against free and independent media. You might find this hard to believe, but during the judiciary takeover, there were protests when journalists tried to cover them, and they faced considerable harassment. Israeli journalists faced significant problems in covering Palestinian issues. Now, even international journalists are facing similar situations. Recently, some journalists from Reuters and Al Jazeera were targeted by the Israeli Air Force with aerial bombings who were then in Lebanon near the Israeli border. This cannot be merely coincidental, for instance, when the Gaza hospital bombings happened and when we talk about the state of press freedom you can understand what is currently happening with the freedom of, of expression of ordinary people in Israel. There are quite intense instances in Israel during protests. Police brutality has been used in Israel to control protesters, and the most significant point that is making people angry. Nowadays is against Netanyahu, the security cabinet which directly controls the military, was not even meeting properly. Their meetings were very sporadic. In July, the chief of staff couldn't even meet Netanyahu because he was too busy with politics. So he wrote a formal letter in which warned that the army was not ready, there was a crisis within the army, and our security apparatus in the country was not alert somewhere or the other. Let's understand how this war will impact the U.S. As American citizens, with the help of some points first, if the war remains contained to Gaza and Israel, the direct impact on the U.S. economy would be minimal as neither of them are major oil producers or trade partners with the U.S. However, there could be some indirect effects such as increased geopolitical uncertainty, higher defense spending, and lower consumer confidence. If the war spreads to other countries in the Middle East, such as Lebanon, Syria, or Iran, the impact on the U.S. economy would be more severe as these countries are either oil producers or transit routes for oil shipments. A disruption in the oil supply could cause a spike in oil prices, which would translate into higher gas prices and inflation for U.S. consumers. This would reduce their purchasing power and hurt their spending on other goods and services. If the war escalates to a regional conflict involving Iran, the impact on the U.S. economy would be catastrophic as Iran is a major oil producer and can block the Strait of Hormo, a vital choke point for global oil trade. In this scenario, oil prices could soar to doll 150 a barrel or more and the world would tumble into a recession. The U.S. economy would suffer from a sharp contraction in output employment and income, 
as well as a surge in inflation and interest rates. So the conclusion is that wherever the war may be, whether it's the Russia-Ukraine war or this Middle East war, it will impact the U.S. in some way or another.